Hello, this is the Ramblings of a Disciplined Mind podcast for Wednesday, November 11th, 2015. So today here in the States is Veterans Day, where we recognize all those people who uh, are serving and have served in our armed forces. And uh, I meant to put the flag up, and I forgot. Darn. I'm not going to drive back and do it. But, uh, yeah, if you're listening to this, and you are or were a member of your armed forces, of your armed forces, of the armed forces, and I know there's at least one in my listenership, uh, thank you. I, I, I truly appreciate your service. It was something I thought very seriously about doing myself when I was when I was a kid. I had the Marines sniffing around me. I had no really grand idea of going to the Marines. My dad had been in the Navy, so that almost immediately eliminated the Navy. I, I really thought seriously about going into the Air Force. Um, not that I could have you know been jumping cool like a, a you know been a fighter pilot or something because I was already in classes by that point, but. I did think about it, and I decided that I was undisciplined enough, see, my undisciplinedness goes back a long way, to, uh, that I didn't really want to have to deal with putting up with a lot of discipline. (laughs) I didn't want people telling me what to do. Of course, little did I know that, you know, all of the, when you're adulting, people are telling you what to do all the freaking time. So, yeah. I probably would have been fine. I would have learned how to, I would have learned that lesson a lot earlier probably, but I didn't do it. So, but if you did, thank you. I, I, I truly appreciate it. Ah, last night was accounting test number three. Um, I feel like I, I did pretty well on it. Uh, even the, even after the first pass, uh, I, yeah, I had a couple that I was kind of questioning, but I kind of felt like it was a little easier, and he and he said this was a bit of an easier test. I don't know, but it, it kind of made me nervous because I'm kind of like, is it easier because I'm missing the point? <laughs> but you had several problems where you had to do math, and then you had to, um, it was multiple choice. You had to find circle the appropriate answer, and. And, you know, most of the time, the answer I came up with was an answer. So that was good. That was good. So we'll see you next week. Uh, assuming I did well on it, that will pretty much be a lock that I will not have to take the final, uh, which is optional. We'll have one more test to go, but, you know, if I can get, if I can get at least a B plus on it, which in average gives me an A in the class... You know, I can, uh, as long as I do halfway decent on the last exam, I, I should get out of there with at least a B, something in the B range. And that's good enough for transfer. So, so yeah, which means I've got three weeks left in this class, which is exciting. Now, Thursday night class, I've got about five, I think. We're about at the midway point. So I'll actually get done with this class a couple weeks earlier. But that's cool because it started a couple weeks earlier. <sighs> so in writing my novel, I've I, I've got a, a a host of characters. And I'm really trying to find out what their arc is. And it's something where I'm thinking I'm gonna have to fix fix some stuff in edits. Um, Perhaps, because you know, I'm almost at the halfway point. If you go by 50,000, I don't know if this is going to go, how much beyond 50,000 this is going to go. Um, I think it will, but I'm not totally sure. You know, it, might, it might be real close to 50,000, which is okay. I, I want to I hit the 50,000 mark uh, on this. So I, I thought I'd just kind of talk through who are my main characters. Um, 
and what I'm thinking about story arcs, and you know, this is kind of you know, talk aloud therapy. Maybe I'll come up with some new ideas. But um, my main character for this, the character that I thought was going to be really kind of my primary character, and he's one of them, is named Orlando Cruz. Um, he resides in St. Louis. This whole book, well, most of this book is taking place in St. Louis. And I chose St. Louis just because it's kind of near the Midwest. It's got some proximity to Chicago. There's a little bit of action that goes on in Chicago. And I was just kind of, I wanted to, to write about someplace new that wasn't Michigan. And I thought, eh, St. Louis. Yeah, I haven't really done any research on St. Louis. You know, I haven't done it. You know, I've got a Google Maps up, and I, I've, I have... Um, you know, set things in, in certain locales, made some assumptions, and, and you know, so like when I'm editing, I'll have a little research to do there. But yeah, so predominantly it's in St. Louis. So Orlando lives in St. Louis. Orlando's what you would call, or what I'm calling, a functional sociopath. Now, in this book, I'm taking advantage of the distinction between sociopath and psychopath. Um, so sociopaths and, psycho and psychopaths share some of the same basic traits in that they don't really feel remorse or guilt. They don't have any real respect for authority. They don't really like having lasting relationships, um, things of that nature. Uh, sociopaths are chaotic. They don't plan, they're very spur of the moment, emotion driven. Psychopaths are different in that, you know, they share those traits that I mentioned at the beginning, but they're also very methodical and they like to plan and they're really good at manipulating people. In fact, they can manipulate a lot of people in, into, you know, the, one of their base manipulations is by hiding as a psychopath. People, have been psychopaths that you know we haven't known that they were psychopaths because they're so good at hiding it and manipulating other people. Um, so Orlando is a functional sociopath. So you know what what that basically means is you know he's not running around killing people yet. Um, I'm not done with the book yet, <laughs> but he's. You know, he, he, he likes to be in his own little world. He works as a computer help desk technician from his home. And that's his cocoon. That's his nest. That's his safe place. Um, he doesn't like having to deal with people face-to-face. Uh, -face. He, he doesn't really like having to deal with people on the phone a whole heck of a lot, especially if you've ever uh, encountered the average intelligence level that tends to call in on computer help desk lines, which is pretty darn low. Um... Or at least as far as computer intelligence, I'll, 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 I'll uh, restrict it that way. So, um, he gets seduced by this woman who actually happens to be, you know, the pharmacist, his pharmacist at the local CVS, uh, an Indian woman by the name of M Magdi. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's actually kind of a made-up name that, that kind of looks, kind of you know, looks uh, Indian. It's not Indian. I mean, it's not. I don't think it's a real name. Uh, although I think I looked it up, and it was like the name of a of a of a city or a town in India. So I guess it is a real name. But I I, I kind of constructed. I should find out how you actually say it. I do not know. Anyway, so she's kind of this man eater. Uh, character and for some reason she set her sights on Orlando and um, they've had a tryst uh, there's been some PG-13 sex which basically means it all happened off camera uh, we see the beforehand we see the afterhand uh, and he's totally he, he doesn't know what to do he's really confused so I, 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 I do kind of know the direction he's going, and I'm not going to spoiler it. Um, 
we've got the, these two police officers who are investigating these, um, I don't know what we call them, these group murders. You know, the, because, because the whole thing is, is, is we've got some place, I'll talk about, we, we, we've got this person called the conductor, is all I've identified this person as. She's a woman, obviously, um, if I'm using she's. And she is a psychopath who is orchestrating, that's the name of the conductor, uh, getting people to do all these killings and they follow a specific pattern where they, they, they kill 12 people in a certain setting and then kill themselves. And there are some subtle signs, no, they're not that subtle, there are some signs for the police who are linking together. Um, so, there, so there's two uh, St. Louis Police Department detectives that are investigating this. One of which is Detective Ying Li Woon, who is of Chinese descent. Um, she's the lead detective of the pair. Um, and her partner is uh, Detective Evan Haynes. Now, Ying Li is... married. She's got a, a, a three-year-old daughter, I think I said. Um, and and she's a Christian. Um, I think I established that in that scene I read, so if you listen to that, you know that. Um, she's rather... She's, got, she's had Evan as a partner for five years, but she's kind of... has a motherly disgust for him because he's, he's the quintessential playboy. He's always got another woman on his on his arm. Um, yeah, uh, Ying Li, I need to figure out, I, I know one change that's going to happen with her, but I, I really need to figure out what my total arc is for her. I'm thinking at some point one of these sets of murders is going to at least threaten her daughter. Um, Yeah, I, th I think I need to I need to figure out the placement of that. Um, now Evan, I ended up coming up with giving him a bit of a twist. So he's been this guy, and he's you know he's 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 kind of your your I don't know what what would be a good, well uh, kind of like Gilderoy Lockhart. You know he's he's not quite as smarmy as Gilderoy, but you know he's got that charm. And he's used to sweeping women off her feet. And there's one point where they're, they're talking to a grieving widow at one of these murders and interviewing her. And she's crying. And, you know, Evan whips out a tissue for her. And, you know, Ying Lee wonders to herself, where did that come from? Does he have like a widow seducing kid he carries with him wherever he goes? Um, so he's always on the prowl. He's always on the prowl. Um, and at one crime scene, he meets this crime tech named Terry, who's this woman. She's engaged. Um, she's she's you know I you know she's got like I think iris descent, short red hair kind of thing. Um, and of course, Evan, Evan, you know, is tracking right on her because it's the first time they met her, and she's pretty attractive, and so he's all over that. And sometime shortly thereafter, um, there's a series, one of these sets of murders that's at a nightclub. And one of the people that gets killed is Terry, who at the time just happens to be dancing with Evan. Uh, and Evan has his, his, his weapon with him and, um, and kills the kills the murderer. So that event is going to spark a sea change for Evan. Uh, the, and, and I think that's also going to spark a bit of a change in Ying Lee. So I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, I, I, you know, it's funny because the only character, the character I think I've got the best arc for so far really is Evan followed by Orlando. Uh, the conductor is going to be, you know, He's a villain, so there's not like a huge arc there as far as where they're going to change. Um, 
yeah, I, I do have some ideas about kind of in-game kind of things to to kind of give me an idea of of um, where that character is going to end up. So yeah, I think that's. Oh, and then I got one last character. I'm really me long today. I'm sorry. Um, that I need to weave into this tapestry, and I actually need to speed her up. Uh, her name is Chastity, and I totally blank on her last name, um, which is a bit, which is a name she hates because her mother was um, a Chicago prostitute. Um, so she remarks that giving her a name like Chastity is is like trying to somehow get a bit of virtue reflected on herself by naming her kid. Uh, after, you know, literally the one virtue that this prostitute does not have. Um, and we meet Chaz, and she's in uh, Joliet State Prison in Chicago. And um, I just, she just engineered her escape. Uh, and so now I need to deal with her getting out, and then she's going to run afoul of the conductor. And so I need that, I need to get that moving. Uh, that's probably got to be like the next scene I write, actually. I haven't, I haven't moved Ch- Chaz for a few scenes. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the characters that I'm playing with. Um, they're kind of all getting equal weight. I'm, I, I'm not doing a strict rotation, you know. But I, I, I try, I, I've split up... So, so my title, I should actually update the nano site. The title that's come to me that I think I like, that doesn't seem to have a lot of hits on Amazon, is called Symphony of Death, uh, which is what the conductor is. She's writing her Symphony of Death. So I'm breaking up the book in movements. So each, each murder and its aftermath is your know, first movement, second movement, third movement kind of thing. So I'm, I'm doing a bit with each of these characters within each movement. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's common. Yeah, this is a little bit of a different experience for me because a lot of my books, and maybe it's been the rookie in me, you know, I've, I've you know, other than you know some cleanup and some continuity, I, I felt are good as written. And this one, I think, is going to need some rework um, before it's going to be in a state where I'm going to be happy with it. So, so I don't know. Maybe this is a sign of, of a little bit of writerly maturity. guess we'll see. Anyway, I'm at almost 18 minutes here. Uh, I am going to stop this. I will be talking to you tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, and I'll be talking to you tomorrow. <laughs> so, be seeing you.